In this video, I'm going to create a control net workflow using Flux. This can be done through one node to switch between the control net and also combine with LORAs. If you haven't used control nets before, they are just a way of conditioning your images with extra structural inputs. This allows more precise control over the image generation process. Common types, especially for architecture, include any, depth, segmentation, and dribble. Flux control nets are not as mature as the SDXL ones, which have 12 control nets and 5 advanced editing options. While Flux only has 7 at the moment, with Depth and Kani working the best out of these so far. However, they are still very powerful and worth using in my opinion. But I will create another video by using control nets with SDXL which allow more options. We can start by downloading the Flux Dev control net. This Union version here lets you switch between the control nets without having to change the models. Quite useful. So download this diffusion file and paste it into your ConfUI directory under Models and Control Net. Just be sure to rename it to something useful like Flux Control Net Union so you can recognize it. I'll also be using the Flux Dev FP8 all in one model, which you can download from here and paste into your checkpoints folder. But you can use the other Flux Dev models if you like. Over in ConfUI, we need to install some custom nodes. The main one you need is the ConfUI Control Net Auxiliary Preprocessor. And the rest are bonus ones. So here I'm using also the RG3, which has a great image compare node. And also the Control Out AI. And the Comfy UI is use. I'll go through these nodes as we develop the workflow, as they are also good to be used in other images you create. I've already installed these, but you will need to restart afterwards. And of course, please make sure you update your Comfy UI. I will start with a standard image to image flux workflow, which you can learn more about in my previous videos. But for an easy way to get this, you can go up to workflow, browse templates, flux, and open up this standard image to image. These templates are actually a great resource if you're just starting out, so you can check these out. There's nothing new here. But it's a good starting point, and I'll be adding our control nets so that we understand the process. This workflow uses the all in one checkpoint, which includes encoders in VAE. This is the one we downloaded at the start. Alternatively, you can use the VUFF models or the ones shown in my previous Flux videos. And here we have the typical Flux guidance, case sampler, and VAE decode on the right. For our control net, we need to add only three nodes. First is the load control net model. You can find the flux control net union that we downloaded. Add this. Next is the apply control net, which connects to the case sampler. And the AIO AUX preprocessor. That's the all in one preprocessor where you can select all your control nets. The apply control net will plug into our case sampler over here. I will make some space. Move nodes and hold control, select and drag to move them as a group. A control net is an extra layer of conditioning for the image generation. So you can plug these in here. Control net goes to control net, flux guidance to the positive, and the negative to the negative. There are no negative prompts of flux. So when I expand this, it's actually empty, but it still needs to be connected to the negative. I can collapse this again. For the image input, we will plug our control net image. But first, we need to add a load image node. I have a building sketch here. This is our 1024 by 1024 resolution. This then goes into the preprocessor, where we can select one of the control nets to run. A good starting point is the depth anything. Most of these in the list will only work with the SDXL as mentioned at the start, but we can still use the basic ones. So attach a preview node, you can get a better understanding of what this does once I run it. And max out the resolution to 1024. This can plug into the apply control net. And on the other side, the positive goes to positive, and the same with the negative. 
I will just move these nodes out the way so you can see how these things are linking together better. The empty latent image is used since we don't have a starting image. A very useful node to use for Flux is the Flux Resolution Calculator, which is from the Control Alt AI custom nodes we installed. You can pick your favorite aspect ratio and it outputs the max width and height that can be used perfectly for the Flux models as the model was trained on that resolution. Plug in the width to the width, the height to the height. And if you want to actually see the pixel numbers, you could add the show any node, which comes from the easy use custom nodes we installed. So when this runs, it will show the resolution here. Finally, add the image compare from the RG3. I'll plug the control net image into A and then generate an image to B. This will be very useful to assess how well our image generated. I'll add a prompt of a photograph of a modern organic form museum. Keep the flux guidance at default as you don't really need to touch this. Apply control net parameters is where you need to do quite a bit of trial and error. So the strength goes from zero to one with one following the control net to the maximum. However, you will get strange results if you do this. So I recommend starting at around 0 0.7. And the percentages are how much greater freedom we give to the AI. So the start will always be zero and you can change the end percentage. So it's good to be around 70% and then leave 30% for the AI creativity. But then you can gradually scale this up or down, same the strength. For the steps, I'll use 25. CFG is always one for flux. And I'll use Euler for the sampler, beta for the scheduler. When I run this, you will see the preview image of the depth control net. which you can see, it focuses more on the form rather than details, but quite good for architectural massing. When the generation is finished, you see the form has been followed pretty well. I didn't specify any materials, so it seems to have taken the words organic literally and used that for the materials, but the surrounding trees and grass look amazing for the context. If I decrease the strength and percentage and regenerate, you can see that the form is followed more loosely. There's more creative interpretation of the architecture. For sketches and inputs with more details, you may want to try the Canny preprocessor. If you want to see the preview without running the whole setup again, you can control and drag over the notes, right click and press bypass. Now it will only run preview below. So the control net will include more lines and details such as window frames, which can be included in the image interpretation. I will select the nodes and press bypass again to activate. And let's set this control net to 0 0.7 and then run. You can see a much bigger difference in the output. I have organic in the prompt, hence the strange fabric-like materials, but you can see more lines have been picked out in the foreground and where the openings are. As I swipe, you can see that the generation is not matching the input control net. This is because my control net image is at one to one resolution, while my empty latent image is at four to three ratio. If I change this to one to one, it will match perfectly on the next one. I will also increase the strength to show what happens if you have too high a value when using the canny edge. A very big difference. You can see it is very sketchy in output, like the input lines. Maybe this is the conceptual style you want. If not, you'll need to dial down the strength. Or you can see how closely this follows the input lines. The control net is more for fine line drawings or sketches. Another interesting alternative is the Pyra Canny preprocessor, which picks up even more detail. I'll add a preview for this. And while we are exploring the Canyon apps, I'll also show you that you can use a standalone preprocessor, like this one, on the Canny Comfy Core. Here you can control the upper and lower thresholds to help you guide the strength of the lights. I'll also add another preview image here so you can compare. I'll adjust the threshold to make the lines focus mainly on the shape. 
and I'll select the other nodes above and bypass them. So we can just compare the control nets. Here you can see that Pyra Canyon adds this extra buffer around the edges for more details in context. While this low threshold canny has simple outlines, but based on your needs, you can really control your generations. I will activate the other nodes again, and this time link my Pyra canny to my control net and run. In the generation, you can see how it has literally followed the lines to create the organic materials along the surface. If you have textures and a lot of definition, this is a good one to use. The AI interprets the lines rather well match the prompt my architectural scene that I defined. To enhance this workflow further, you can add in LoRa's. If you don't know what these are, take a look at my previous videos. I'll use the power LoRa loaded from the RG3, which lets you stack LoRa's together. This will go after the checkpoint. The model and clips connect to each other. Then the model to the case sampler and the clip, the text in code. I have a long list of lore here, but first I'll show you the Flux Turbo Lore. You can get this from the Hugging Face page and add it to your lore folder in CompUI. This model allows you to create quality generations in just eight steps, which greatly increases your speed. So I can change my steps to eight now and add a different image this time. I'll change the prompt to a modern clad museum with curtain wall glazing. I will adjust the strength and run. This took half the time run and the quality is still very high. It has added incredible detail from the control net, taking in the cladding, framing and paving stones here. You can stack even more lures together. If I take the classic Ghibli style lure from Hugging Face, I can just reduce the strength slightly and I will need to add the key phrase of the style to the prompt. Run again. Immediately, you get the vibrancy from the lore brought in from the anime style and even the anime style clouds. This will be useful if you want to create more of an illustration for your designs. If you want to have an even more artistic style, decrease the strength of the control net and run again. Now you have a much more vibrant and colorful, beautifully illustrated impression of the building. Hope you can now begin to understand the power of combining these workflows together. And through a bit of trial and error, you can achieve impressive images and match your design intention. Try these out for yourself and I'll see you in the next video.